If you like this video give a thumbs up. HITN Brief The Facts Dr. George King founded the Aetherius Society after, according to him, receiving telepathic messages from an extraterrestrial. The messages given through Dr. King from the 1950s onward corroborate with UFO activity disclosed today, in 2021, reflect on, UFOs are no longer taboo, their existence is confirmed within the mainstream and many people are aware of them. Is the next step to listen to the government about what they represent? Or should we pay attention to those who claim to have had contact? Make sure you follow Collective Evolution on Telegram as we have no idea how much longer we will be on Facebook. Prepare yourself, you are to become the voice of interplanetary parliament, is what Dr. George King 1919 was told when he was first contacted by an extraterrestrial intelligence in 1954, known to him as Aetherius, whom, according to King, was a highly evolved extraterrestrial from Venus and part of an alliance of several extraterrestrial bits of intelligence from other planets. Before we go any further, please note that CE founder Joe Martino and myself recently sat down with Richard Lawrence for a podcast. Richard is the Executive Secretary for the Aetherius Society Europe and Africa. You can see him pictured above to the left of Dr. King. Lawrence was a close student of Dr. King. It was a very interesting discussion that dives into the topic of extraterrestrial messages, mainstream UFO disclosure, channeling extraterrestrials, spirituality, consciousness, the state of politics, the Aetherius Society, and much more. You can listen to that podcast here, channeling is the ability to receive telepathic messages from supposed extraterrestrials. Many claim to have this ability, many believe they do but probably won't, and the idea of channeling extraterrestrials has exploded to the point where it's hard to know who is being honest with themselves. I find the case of Dr. King to be much different, I personally believe he was one of the few channelers who was truly authentic. I've been studying this phenomenon for more than 15 years, and much of what King was relaying to humanity decades ago corroborates with a lot of information that's come to light about the phenomenon today, in 2021. If there is anyone to consider credible within the phenomenon of channeling, I believe Dr. King is one of the best examples. Dr. King was considered by many to be a master of yoga able to enter the highest state of consciousness attainable on Earth, cosmic consciousness, also known as Nirvana or Navakalpa Samadhi. For more than a decade he had devoted himself to the intense practice of yoga for an average of 8 to 10 hours per day. Not so much yoga for physical fitness, well-being, or relaxation, but the higher forms of yoga, for the mastery of psychic abilities and ultimately enlightenment. Dr. King believed as it says in the ancient mystic Upanishads, that the greatest gift that anyone can give to anyone else is wisdom. And, conversely, that the greatest crime is to confuse by giving people the wrong teaching. For 43 years 1954 to 1997, he dedicated himself to his mission of helping Mother Earth and helping humanity as a whole navigate this period of great change. This mission was in essence to spread, and act upon, the teachings of advanced extraterrestrial intelligence, it was in English, the voice was not in the head, this was no psychic apparition, the voice was outside of myself and it said, prepare yourself you are to become the voice of interplanetary parliament. Well, I had no idea what that meant, I knew nothing about UFOs in those days, I had not studied them, but I have studied yoga and I studied yoga long enough to realize that this was very important. And it was eight days after this first event that I decided that the only way that I could solve this mystery, because nobody else could help me and I tried many people, was to go into meditation myself. So I locked myself in the room, fully determined to stay there until I found some answer. Well I didn't have to stay very long because a man, physical, who I did recognize, he was alive in India at the time, a well-known yogi master, he walked into the room, without me having to open the door, by the way, he walked across the floor and sat down in the chair which creaked under his weight and he told me about the previous contact I'd had was contact and he gave me certain instructions. I have had some physical contacts as well as mental contacts. Very briefly mental contacts are quite unusual in a way that I precipitate a yogic, somatic condition to gain rapport with higher intelligence. Dr. King Nikola Tesla once said, I think that nothing can be more important than interplanetary communication. It will certainly come someday, and the certitude that there are other human beings in the universe, working, suffering, struggling, like ourselves, will produce a magic effect on mankind and will form the foundation of a universal brotherhood that will last as long as humanity itself. Perhaps it's already happening? I recently came across some interesting documents archived by the Federal Bureau of Investigation FBI, that suggest he Tesla, had contact with space people and that he himself was an extraterrestrial brought here as a baby, from Venus. 
In that same document, Dr. King is also mentioned, it's a newsletter that appears to be written by writer Margaret Storm, along with what appears to be her husband, John. What's interesting is the fact that the FBI had enough interest in this phenomenon to document it. A part of it reads as follows, this letter will not reach you in time to cite flying saucers over New York on the night of June 13, from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. but there will again be full-scale operations of flying saucers over all American areas on July 1. This will be in three phase, as follows, New York areas, July 1st, 9 a.m., Washington, D.C. areas at 9.25 a.m., General North American areas, after 9.24 a.m., Central American areas, 9.30 a.m., South American areas, 9.35 a.m. Second phase, same areas as above, beginning at 12 o'clock midday, July 1st. Third phase, full-scale operations over all American areas beginning at 7 o'clock on the evening of July 1st. The above information has been supplied by George King. George King is considered the best telepathic contact which the space people have, it's a good document to show just how credible King was considered to be. His credibility has only grown with all that's come to fruition decades later regarding the UFO phenomenon, there are usually two ways people who have claimed to have contact with extraterrestrial intelligence do so, both physical and telepathic contact. Dr. King apparently had both, UFOs and the extraterrestrial hypothesis are being given an unprecedented amount of credibility within the mainstream. The idea that we are being visited and have been visited by people from outer, Lord Admiral Hill Norton, space is no longer taboo, and a serious topic of discussion. It seems that many people are quite open to and aware of the reality of UFOs and extraterrestrials these days, but when it comes to contact experiences and those who claim to have had contact we still have a ways to go. That being said, the next step, and a crucial one when examining this phenomenon, is to listen to the people who claim to have contact and to those who have had contact. There are many contact stories out there and when you dive into it, the consistency in some of these cases and the corroboration is truly interesting, to say the least. One of the most recent ones I wrote about dealing with 60 school children in Zimbabwe, the beings in this case, as in many others including Dr. King's contacts, seem to have expressed concern and care for humanity, this isn't always the case, but it's a common theme, what I find intriguing about Dr. King's transmissions is the fact that the information he was relaying to the public in the 1950s correlates with a lot of information we now know about the phenomenon today, in 2021. For example, he stated that they were highly concerned about humanity's use, testing, and manufacturing of nuclear weapons. Fast forward today and we have a lot of information about the phenomenon which suggests this, for example, a declassified report by the Air Force Nuclear Weapons Center from June 1959 shows just how seriously the United States government wanted to detonate a nuclear weapon on the moon for scientific measurements and such. According to Colonel Ross Dedrickson, who had a long stint with the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission, they did try this. While with the Air Force and the Atomic Energy Commission, he learned about incidents involving nuclear weapons. And among these incidents were a couple of nuclear weapons sent into space that was destroyed by extraterrestrials. At the very end of the 70s and the early 80s, we attempted to put a nuclear weapon on the moon and explode it for scientific measurements and other things, which was not acceptable to the extraterrestrials. They destroyed the weapon before it got to the moon. And that is their major concern, to preserve the integrity of the Earth because it also affects their own system. The idea of an explosion in space by any Earth government was not acceptable to the extraterrestrials and that has been demonstrated over and over. Dedrickson it's now a matter of public record that UFOs have been seen, many times, hovering over nuclear missile storage facilities. There have been multiple incidents. During some of these events, the missile launching capabilities were shut down. Are they sending a message? There has always been a strong connection between UFOs and nuclear weapons facilities, for example, Malmstrom Air Force Base in Montana is one of the best examples. An event occurred there in March of 1967 at a base that was responsible for maintaining a large number of nuclear weapons. It was a nuclear weapons launch facility. We're talking about people who are responsible for guarding the launch of these weapons that have the capability to destroy our planet and all life on it. Military witnesses, and others, saw a red, glowing UFO hovering just outside the front gate. After that happened, all of the nuclear missiles shut down and went completely dead. Here is a clip of Captain Robert Salas, one of the men involved in the incident, giving his testimony, it's amazing to think that Dr. King was talking about their concerns with our nuclear weapons in the 1950s, isn't it? Dr. King claimed that these beings were concerned about humanity and the direction we are heading. 
that we need to do a better job at preserving the integrity of the Earth, living in harmony with the planet as well as operating from a higher level of consciousness. Working on oneself was very important, meditation, inner peace, and personal development were, are key players to help bring about a better world according to King. Humanity operating not from a place of judgment, ego, greed, selfishness, competition, and service to oneself, but a place of compassion, love, empathy, cooperation, and service to others was a big part of the extraterrestrial message that came through him, this is part of what the Aetherius Society is all about, and again, the messages of Dr. King corroborates with countless examples of supposed communications and events with UFOs and extraterrestrials. That's why it's so intriguing to listen to him nearly 70 years later, below is a photo was taken of Dr. King on Mount Ramshead. The Aetherius Society encourages people to listen to the lecture by King called The Four Aspects of Creation, for a better understanding of the phenomenon, according to King. Below is a broadcast from 1959, when King appeared on the BBC supposedly communicating with extraterrestrial intelligence.